Hi gang, Scott here. We're taking a deeper dive into one of our Luminar AI tools, the toning tool. This is a classic split tone tool, adding a two-toned tint to your photo. And try and say that five times fast. But uh, this, uh, this video, I'll explain what a split tone is, uh, the controls we have in the toning tool, and a few examples of how you might use it to change the color gradation of your photo, add tints, and change the overall mood and temperament of the scene. Uh, really quick, if you are interested in Luminar AI, thinking about adding it to your toolkit, check the show notes. There's an offer code down there that can save you a little bit of money. And if you like tutorials like this. Think about supporting the channel. There's a little button popping up here, link in the show notes too. You can uh, buy me a virtual coffee. I can fill the mug and keep coming back and doing more tutorials like this. So with that, let's have a look at the toning tool. The toning tool lives in the creative area and let me open it up and expand all of the controls. And we see a few things here. We've got an amount, we have shadows, highlights, some saturation, hue sliders. Oh, what's going on here, Scott? Well, the best thing to do here is just take a step back and understand what a split tone is, which is what the toning tool gives us. A split tone means you choose a color tint for your shadows, a different color tint for your highlights, and you can control how strong or how subtle that tint is, as well as the balance between them. When does the tint shift from whatever you've chosen for shadows into highlights? And these controls are what we have here in the toning tool. So um, let's run down things. So amount is the overall strength of the entire toning look. Right now, nothing has changed because I haven't made any slider changes. We have a set of sliders, saturation and hue. We have one for the shadows, we have one for the highlights. And uh, last is the balance. That's that uh, shifting of when do I change? When does that tint transition from the shadow tint to the highlights tint? So let's, let's do an example here. Now, one little quirk about the tool, I'm choosing the shadows here. I have to set some level of saturation before I can choose a hue. You can see this is grayed out right now. So I have to add a little saturation. But uh, let's do a classic warm, cool tinting where the shadows are cool and the highlights are warm. So first off, let's choose a cool tone. We're in our shadows. Let's just choose a hue in the you know the 220-ish range, a good classic blue. And I'll push saturation. Now watch the photo. The darker parts of the clouds, the deep parts of the ocean are taking on this blue tint, right? But the highlights up in the sky, they are not. And I can control how strong the overall tinting is with the amount slider. Its default is about halfway. And uh, there really is no correct value. We tweak and we change based on the look. Now let's do the same thing with our highlights. We'll choose a different tint. A little quirk again, add a little saturation. Let me set a, a warm tint, like an orange, like around 30 or so. And then we start adding saturation. Again, watching the photo, we start to see that orange tint introduced into the highlights. And I push it really far. And now we have this classic warm, cool tone right before, after, and I'll put on the side by side. You can see that the darker parts of the clouds, the shadow areas, the shadowed parts of the ocean are staying and getting this bluish tone. And then the highlights, highlights in the sky, highlights in the reflections in the water, those are picking up the orange tint. And the last bit, we have the balance. Let me turn off that side by side. We can shift things toward the shadows. So pulling toward the left goes toward shadows. That's how the interface is set up too, right? We have shadows on the left, balance to the left, bias to the shadows tint, or to the right, and adding more of that orange across the board. The balance slider, in a way, you can think of it as saying, how much of the photo do I want to consider a shadow or a highlight? And then, of course, the tint gets amped up as a result. So one more time, balance to the left adds the shadow tint, the blue tone, balance to the right biases things toward the highlights tint and in this example this orange tone all right so as our first example why don't we why don't we dial this in to uh to something that uh is is pretty pleasing here so let's start back with the shadows and that that blue is is certainly too saturated so i'd, I'd pull that back so it's a little more subtle. I, I tend to like subtle looks more than dramatic looks, or I should say dramatic shifts. 
Uh, that's cool. Uh, highlights wise, orange once again maybe less on the on the saturation brown there. Now balance, I did kind of like things shifted a little more toward the warm, right? So a lot of times I'll push the slider until it's too much and then kind of back it off. Again, watching the photo, the number doesn't matter as much. And maybe the amount now too. So the amount's going to, so balance is shifting things more toward orange. Amount is saying, give me more of everything, right? So just give me more blue, give me more orange. And you know, a hundred is, for my taste, generally too much, but it doesn't have to stay at 50. It doesn't have to be a low number. It can be a pretty large amount. Right around there feels pretty good. So uh, that is one example of split tone. Let's take a look at it before and after. And that is the only change made to this photo. You know, look at all of the other controls. Nothing has been added. This is solely just the split tone. That is the only change here. And that is a very different scene, right? The mood, the temperament of this photo. This is, you know, cool and, and drab. It's got some uh, good quality, good bones to it. But this coloration, this split toning here, that really changes things. So that's, uh, that's one example of using a split tone. Let's, uh, let's take the same photo and work through a couple of other things here. Let's try a different feel for it. Same exact scene, just different tints, and you'll see how this toning tool can really alter the mood of a scene. So instead of a orange tint for the highlights, what if we took this in a twilight direction and we push this toward you know, a, a magenta or a purple? Maybe, um, oh, around there feels like a good purple tone. It's very strong. Uh, but it's um, it's a nice feel to it. Let's back off our our strength sum, the amount, and what's our balance looking like? You know, um, there. Let's that's deep in. Let's let's take back some of that saturation so we have less saturation, and you start to get the feel here. Where I will work with the sliders and push things around non-linearly, right? You don't work top to bottom very often with the toning tool. It's a, it's a matter of fine-tuning the look. And often you'll get a nice tone going on with saturation, but if it feels, oh, it's a little bit too saturated here, I have choices. I could dial back the saturation. Maybe the strength of the whole thing's a little bit too strong. I can dial that back. Maybe the balance is off, and you, you just work with these things here. So um, there is a bit of artistry to it, right? You are you know fine tuning and tweaking and making these subtle changes. But now this is a very different field photo, right? You know, so before and after, you know, same image, but this one has a, a cooler, you know, calmer. Uh, you know, I guess all of them have a kind of a relaxed feel, just given the nature of the scene. But once again, this this toning change is really altering the temperament of the photo. Now in these two examples, I've used two different tones, right? I've used one tone for the shadows, a separate tone for the highlights. You don't have to do that. You don't have to add a color tint to both the shadows and the highlights. So another example I wanna show you is just using a singular tint and adding it to some of your photo. Let me reset the toning tool. and I'll stick with the highlights here. Add a little bit of saturation. I like that warm look, so we'll get that back in there, that uh, that 30 orange. I'm struggling here. Let me just type it in. How about that? 30. There we go. And uh, saturation. Let's push the saturation up pretty far so we have a view of that. And here's where we have the balance control comes in handy, where we can say, you know, I want more of the scene to be highlight. And so I'm adding more of that tint in. Now the deepest shadows, they're not receiving anything, right? The shadow side, we haven't touched. We're not adding any saturation, no hue shift at all. But the highlights, we have this balance slider. We can push it all the way to 100 and basically say, give me a single colored tint for my entire photo. Uh, I, I tend to, I have a different technique for that. I'll show you in a minute, uh, I prefer. But for just a singular, I'd like to accent my highlights with a particular tint. The toning tool is very useful for that. And of course, we still have the amount slider so we can dial things up and down however we need that there. And I don't know, maybe something like that feels pretty good.
So what's this one other example I have of, it's a variation on a monochromatic tinting. You're choosing the same tint, and I'll stick with this warm example here. So in this case, an orange at a value of 30. So the same hue value, but we can use different saturation levels for the shadows versus the highlights. And it, uh, it really makes some interesting, interesting looks. So let's do that. So sticking with the 30 here in the highlights, Let's pop over the shadows, nudge saturation up. I'll just type that in, 30 here, and let's start dialing things in. So for the shadows, uh, I tend to like those less saturated, right? So maybe I'll keep the shadows in the, the low 30s area. And then for the highlights, maybe a healthy amount of saturation, something like that. And here's where balance comes in again, right? So we can balance things and bias things uh, toward a little more of a muted look, like with the shadows, because the shadows have a lower saturation than the highlights. So if I bias toward shadows, making this a little more muted, I can still amp up the amount slider. You can see the difference between the more saturated look, the less saturated look, but it's that same overall hue. I like this approach of separating the amount of saturation across my highlights and shadows, and it gives a more nuanced blend of a singular hue across different tones in your photo. It's like we don't have a luminosity mask to apply to like a singular color tint in Luminar AI, but with the toning tool for this type of tinting job, we can get pretty close using the same hue, same hue of 30 in the shadows and the highlights, but just changing the saturation. Uh, again, I, I prefer less saturated shadows versus highlights. You might like something else or a different photo, or you know, I'm, I'm a landscape guy, so if you're doing this with travel photo or product photo, maybe you want something different. Now, product photo, probably not a good choice to uh, tint the product, but uh, you know, like a, a lifestyle photo maybe would be a better example. But fiddle things around there, and then let's take a look at before and after side by side. You know, once again, a very different mood to the scene, right? Before and after. And I'll say it one more time. This is the only tool I'm applying to this photo. Everything else has been untouched. No enhance, no light tool, nothing like that solely the toning tool. So it is quite powerful and it's a good finisher for your photos. Check it out if you've not played around with it before. Hopefully this video gave you some ideas about how you might want to use it. Other questions, go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.